months ago, I got the chance to explore the new Jili Jiaji. This is Jili's first MPV, which first went on sale in March of 2019, and has since become quite a hit in the domestic market and other markets in Southeast Asia. I see a lot of these as family haulers throughout China, but also as DD cars. I lost a lot of the footage for this video and many others because of a hard disk failure at the time, but I was able to piece this one together with what I had left and I'm happy to share my thoughts on this handsome MPV minivan SUV sport wagon car thingy. This is the Geely MPV. Geely is famous for acquiring Volvo back in 2009. Now before then, Geely was not a very popular brand. They struggled getting going. In fact, the very first car the Geely won was kind of a, um, a terrible car, <laughs> to be honest with you. Then they made other cars, they made small little cars, but Geely's manufacturing history goes back. They used to make refrigerators, but now they're making things like this. And as you can see, this is a beautiful MPV. It's a very unique design. Unlike other minivans like the Buicks and the Chevys and the Fords, this is a very low and wide vehicle. So it's got a much sportier feel to it when you drive it around the town but it also offers the practicality of a regular minivan. Three row seating, but of course these giant secondary doors. An interesting story about Geely, they once built a, um, a little hatchback car. It was very cheap. It was supposed to be their introduction to the Chinese market you know, many, many years ago. And during the launch of it, the owner of Geely was so upset that only one person showed up to the launch that he took a steamroller and rode over all 100 cars that he had built. <laughs> little stories like that make me laugh. Geely is also famous for developing their new brand, which is Lincoln Co. What the owner wanted to do, he wanted to build luxury cars, but he couldn't do it. He wasn't very successful. So what he ended up doing was building smaller cars and sold them to the masses. Well, that provided enough profit and capital for him to go out and buy a legacy vehicle company like Volvo, and he was smart. He didn't close the factories and move everything to China where it's cheaper to build things. He kept the Volvo factories open in Europe and really learned from the manufacturing processes that were already in place there, and he brought it to the Geely brand. Driving the Geely MPV. Now, we're just gonna go around the corner. We're not gonna go very far. We're not gonna take it out on the highway or anything. But already I can feel this is a very solid view. This is my friend Jenny. Jenny has um, uh, been kind enough to give us access to uh, a ton of Geely products. And so I'm very excited for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Jenny. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. All right. Driving the Geely, it's a very heavy car. I feel the heaviness in it. Um, I love the steering wheel, this real leather steering wheel. It's yes. very nice. And the seat is very big. It's a lot larger than other Chinese cars that I've driven as far as it's very wide. And so I feel like I'm on a sitting in a sofa in my living room, really. That's how, I mean, it's it's firm yet soft in all the right places, right? And I know that Jili uh, founder, Li? Li Shufu. Yeah, Li Shufu is famous for when he first started this company for saying, how hard could it be to to build a car. It's a sofa on wheels. Now, this is not a big MPV. It's one of the largest cars that Geely makes, but it's as far as a minivan goes or something, this is not very big. It's three rows and three seats, but it's uh, it's not the giant Buicks or the giant um, Fords and Chevys that you see on the roads here. They're almost like a status symbol, whereas large SUVs are status symbols in the West. Here in China, the status symbol, not just for families, but for businessmen, seem to be these very large luxury minivan MPVs. Look at these wheels. I love the colored wheels as they come up and match the color of the vehicle. Just beautiful lines on this, all the way back to this C-pillar, which is a very popular design feature. I'm seeing a lot of Chinese cars, this sloping C-pillar. It's blacked out, but Geely's famous kind of water ripple effect grill. You see that a lot. And their new logo. I love these forward windows right here. This is something that we don't see too much in vehicles these days. Yeah, it's a very, very handsome interior. The materials in here are about on par with what you would expect in a vehicle of this price point cup holders. Looks like a secondary holder for your phone there. Lots of storage. That's a deep pocket there. 
floating dash with all the goodies there but i love this element right here this little design element it almost kind of looks like a chrysler element don't you think a very very cool center speaker this design feature it's like a lip here and almost like a shelf i guess you can use that to put little goodies up there the back seat as you can see i got my camera gear in here you know it's um these are captain seats very very comfortable the 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 middle row seats are much narrower and smaller than the front seats for obvious reasons i think this is a family hauler so it does feel a little bit cramped in the back seat i won't lie but again this is a lower kind of a smaller mpv uh almost the cross between a minivan and a wagon Ooh, wow the third row seat man you got to climb back here uh, but they do recline and, you know i'm about five nine you know it's not some place i want to spend in a a lot of time in but uh, I got plenty of leg room here and this open area between the middle seat allows for your left foot to kind of stretch out a little bit but definitely one thing I do like about this third row I'm not a third row guy I don't have a family but if you have a third row you know headroom is always a thing in this vehicle it's not a thing but can put the seats down and it opens up quite a bit Lots of options as far as storage in this thing. Still, again, not large, but not small either. We're driving through um, Dongshan, which is um, a town in Zhongshan, and it's known for factories. And so all around us are rather rough roads. And this thing is, uh, the suspension, although a little vibrating, handles the rough roads very, very well. It's a solid vehicle. 20, 30 years ago, the only car companies were like Dongfeng and FAW, right, uh -huh. and and, uh, and Sayak and Biot, right. So now Geely, I think, was the very first privately yeah. owned yeah. car company in China. Yeah, it's a private enterprise. Mm -hmm. And it happened so quickly, you yeah. know. I mean, in 2009, when they bought Volvo, just 10 yeah. years prior to that, they couldn't sell one car. Yeah. <laughs> and here they are, one of the largest auto manufacturers in China now. Yeah. So Zhongshan, Zhong... Zhongshan. Zhong... Zhongshan, Zhongshan. Shen. Yeah, Zhongshan. Zhong, not Dongshan, it's Zhongshan. Zhongshan, Zhongshan, okay. Zhongshan. Okay. Yeah, we have French uh, shop, little shop in different towns. Okay.